Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, let me introduce briefly. My name is Anush Karesh. I'm Consul General of the Czech Republic in New York. Due to the surge of Omicron variant, unfortunately, I'm not able to welcome you personally in our beautiful historic building on Upper East Side called Bohemian National Hall, a home of Czech Consulate General. However, it's both my honor and pleasure to welcome you to special multimedia event called a tribute to the artists who perished in the Holocaust. As today, January 27th, we are commemorating the International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Jewish intellectuals, writers, scientists, and thinkers who turned the tides of history and shaped the world today as we know it, and as well as ordinary people of Jewish orig origin experienced, experienced the worst of Nazi cruelty from year 1939 till 1945. But all of them never gave up the will to live. For me personally, there's a special symbol of the Holocaust that reflects all the sadness and tragedy of it, as well as resilience and hope. A silver maple tree of Theresienstadt, Theresien. In January 1943, a Jewish teacher imprisoned in Theresien concentration camp in former Czechoslovakia planted a silver maple tree and nurtured it along with a group of J Jewish children who used their precious water rations to help it grow. 78 years later, the tree was planted here in New York and it comes from a cutting of the same tree in Terezin. Today, we honor the strength of the Holocaust survivors, the memories of their friends and our beloved ones who perished in Nazi concentration camps during the Holocaust. As children in Terezin, their stories are reflected in the children's silver maple tree. Let's virtually plant such trees inside of everyone so we'll never forget Nazi's cruelty and commemorate the victims of Holocaust. In such a way, we may become the trees, caretakers for generations to come. So in closing, I would like to sincerely thank Manus School of Music, American Society for Jewish Music, Czech Centers in New York, and Permanent Mission of the Czech Republic to the United Nations in New York for joining us and commemorating the International Holocaust Remembrance Day together. Please enjoy the concert later. Thank you. Hello and welcome. I'm Michael Levitt, president of the American Society for Jewish Music. Today, January 27th, is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, which commemorates the victims of the Holocaust between 1941 and 1945. I would like to thank the Consul General of the Czech Republic, Arnoš Karesh, and the Director of the Czech Center, New York, Miroslav Konvalina, for organizing this important event. International Holocaust Remembrance Day was designated in 2005 by a United Nations resolution to mark the 60th anniversary of the liberation of the Nazi concentration camps. And this particular date was chosen because it is the day in 1945 that the Auschwitz concentration camp was liberated. With this concert, we remember the 6 million Jews and 11 million others killed by the Nazi regime and its collaborators. This performance was originally presented to commemorate Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, that horrific program in Germany that took place on November 9th, 1938, in which synagogues and Jewish businesses were burned and destroyed. Tonight's performance 
is being rebroadcast and restreamed as a fitting tribute for International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Before we hear the music, written by composers who perished in the Holocaust, as well as the contemporary composer John Khalifa responding to the tragedy of its victims, I want to thank those institutions that joined with the American Society for Jewish Music and the Manus Sounds Festival with its wonderful young performers to sponsor the original live performance. The Leo Beck Institute, YIVO Institute for Jewish Research, and the Center for Jewish History. Uh, thank you, Arnošt and Michal. I'm Miroslav Konvelina, director of the Czech Center in New York and president of UNIC, European National Institutes for Culture in New York. I would like to welcome you all to this special event of remembrance of the victims of the Holocaust. A tribute to the artists who perished in the Holocaust is a multimedia event which premiered with great success at the Center for Jewish History last fall. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our partners for this online presentation. The Manes Sounds Festival, Manes School of Music, The New School, the American Society for Jewish Music, the Leo Beck uh, Institute, the Iowa Institute for Jewish Research and the Center for Jewish History. The music uh, you will hear tonight is by prominent composers murdered some at a very early age in the Nazi concentration camps. Some of the music was composed while the artists were interned in the Theresien ghetto before being sent by rail transport to their deaths at Auschwitz and other concentration camps. How tragic that their lives were cut so short. We can only imagine how much more great music they might have composed had the Holocaust never occurred. A significant part of the program is centered around the life of the exceptionally talented Czech boy Petr Ginz, a writer and artist who was deported to Terezin at 14 and gassed in Auschwitz two years later. You will see a short excerpt uh, from the film The Last Flight of Petr Ginz, a video made uh, for us by the film director Sandra Dixon, with music by the American composer John Califra. Also included is a video message from Israel by the Holocaust survivor and artist Chava Pressburger, Eva Ginzová, sister of Petr Ginz. The program will conclude with John Califra's contemporary chamber opera, Echoes from the Darkness, Messages from the Terezin, Diaries of Petr and Eva Ginz. It was written for the Kristallnacht event of the Manes Sounds Festival and had its world premiere in November 9, 2021. Finally, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to the artistic director of the Manes Sound Festival, Pavlina Dokovska, and to the young artists of Manes School of Music. I hope you will enjoy this online program, and we are looking forward to seeing you soon in person at the Bohemian National Hall in New York.
sonata in particular, the piece was written while the composer Hans Gasse was at Peregrin, and um, this was a state of being where people did not know when they would be called to take the train um, to Auschwitz. So this piece is called Dance, but it's um, actually quite chilling in some ways, and um, is very evocative of the kind of premonition of this train ride, um, which I'm sure you'll hear in the piece. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Sandra Dixon, and I am one of the directors of The Last Flight of Pater Gens. The film tells the story of a boy who by the age of 16 had written five novels, produced 170 drawings and paintings, and walked to the gas chamber at Auschwitz. When our film team saw Pater's art for the first time, we knew his imagination, brilliant, prescient, and stunningly vivid, was best epitomized by his drawing of a red spaceship. And we realized we had to think like Pater. In his mind, the red spaceship is not stationary, it flies. So animation became a tool to tell the story. I've selected a sequence from the beginning of the film that depicts the power and hope found in Pater's imagination. Peter was born in the year 1928, and I was born two years later, 1930. We were teasing each other. Sometimes I was also teasing him, and when he teased me, I wept all, very often. He called me in Czech, it's called Slečna Brečna, and I could tr translate it into English, Mississippi. After he finished his elementary school, Jewish elementary school in Prague, my parents put him into a school for exceptional children. It lasted only a year, and then when the occupation of the Nazis began, he was thrown out because of his Jewish origin. His favorite studies were always sciences. But I can say it <laughs> with my whole heart because he, he loved to draw. He had always a notebook with him and some pencils. Peter read many books, but in his young age, very young, he preferred the books of Jules Verne. And I think that he read perhaps all the books Verne wrote.
Jules Verne, for example, wrote a novel in 80 days around the world. Better wrote a novel in one second around the world. I'd like to conclude with one of my favorite drawings and writings from Pater. Thank you for inviting Pater Gens into your lives. I am honored to take part in this important evening commemorating the artists who perished in the Holocaust. Art is unique, uplifting, part of the human spirit. In Terrazin, it was the barrier against despair. You will not find it anywhere else in nature. People say that this is one of the signs that human beings are more developed. I feel that life of plants and animals is similar to that of humans. They too experience youth and old age and day to day struggle for life. But human beings are also capable of an evil-minded, planned kind of cruelty that you will not find among animals or plants. I hope that the spirit that makes us capable to create art will overcome the cruelty and brutality that is unfortunately also part of human spirit. As artistic director of Mena Sounds Festival, I would like to thank director Sandra Dixon for contributing specially for Mena Sounds Festival the excerpt from The Last Flight of Peter Gins, and to thank the extraordinary Hava Pressburger, Eva Ginsova which it was so moving because even though she's not well, she wanted to give this message to all of us. She survived the Holocaust and she became a very prominent artist. We are deeply moved and deeply grateful for this message. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the composer who wrote the music of the film, The Last Flight for Peter Gins, 
who wrote many wonderful mu music works and who also is a graduate of Manor School of Music many years ago, 1979, and who wrote for us the world premiere of the Echo from the Darkness based on the diaries of Peter and Eva Gintz, John Califra. Tonight's video is from a November 9th performance at the Center for Jewish History in New York. This was an event commemorating Kristallnacht. So far, the works you've heard were created by composers who languished inside the Terezin camp. My work, the chamber opera that you're going to hear, Echoes from the Darkness, was created for the Manus Sounds Festival and premiered at that November 9th performance. What you're going to hear tonight is something different. Originally, tonight's performance was supposed to be live, but because of COVID restrictions, that wasn't possible. So I thought that it might be an opportunity to present the work differently than it was presented in its premiere. I had intended to explore multimedia possibilities for this uh, in the final work. And in fact, uh, there will be a video set created by music video artist Kevin Godley for the final work. Uh, but tonight, you'll be hearing excerpts from that larger work, and you'll be hearing it presented in two separate recordings. The first was from the November 9th premiere that was conducted by Kelly Lamb, and this will be blended with a new recording uh, conducted by maestro Derek Gleason. But in both instances, it features the same cast. Those are soprano Elise Albion as Ava Gins, tenor Daniel Rosenberg as her brother Pet. Uh, and for, for the parents, we have mezzo-soprano Larissa Zenz as Maria and baritone Yannick Horlitz as Otto. Now, these two singers will, will also occasionally be appearing in a chorus along with soprano Theodora Siegel and tenor Hao Zhang. Uh, the multimedia approach to this presentation will be facilitate, facilitated by the use of relevant graphic elements like photographs from the Ginz family, and historical photographs and documents. The story of Peter Ginz, his sister Eva, and their family is one literally of millions who saw their lives upended by an unimaginably monstrous horror. The story of the suffering of one family in the context of the enormity of the Holocaust should not cause us to forget that the millions of others were also each unique with loving associations hopes, fears, dreams, and aspirations. Each was a human being with all the complexity, potential, uniqueness, foibles, and value that the term conveys. But these people were different. Each was forced to endure unthinkable suffering, degradation, and loss of a sort that few of us can even conceptualize. But for the survivors and their families, this is also different. For the remaining survivors and their descendants, the suffering of the Holocaust endures. Its dark effects ripple through subsequent generations. This also should not be forgotten. My purpose in creating this work was to try to honor the memory of one boy and his family, and to express my admiration and deep affection for his sister, who is still with us, and to my immense privilege and honor, supports this work. This has been a labor of love for me, but sadly, I believe this story and all the stories of the Holocaust are also warnings. I'm particularly aware of this as an American living at this moment in our history. I can only hope that this work does some small measure of justice to its subjects. Peter Ginz was an extraordinary person, and we can say that even as we lost him while he was still a boy. His remarkable artistic and intellectual gifts were amplified by a rare depth of humanity, especially so 
for someone so young. As a young boy, he excelled, writing prose and poetry, and in his painting, drawing, and printmaking. Among his paintings and drawings was one of a striking view of the earth, as Pater imagined it would look seen from the mountains of the moon. This drawing was in the collection of Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. And in 2003, Israeli astronaut Ilan Roman brought a copy of it onto the tragic last flight of the space shuttle Columbia. When the astronaut and the shuttle were tragically lost, the drawing and its artist suddenly received international attention. It was then that a family living in Prague, who were living unbeknownst to them, in the apartment where Pater grew up, realized that the mysterious and intriguing papers and documents that had been found sitting in their attic belonged to him. Among those papers were his diary, stories, poems, and a variety of artwork. It was because of this that Pater's work, after so many years, found its way to me. Pater's diary was especially dear to me, as dear as the happy childhood we shared. He was my brother, and our childhood was filled with love and happiness. But it lasted only a short time ending when the world was plunged into the chaos and sadism of Nazism. Still, in some way, our childhood continued during most of that time, but truly ended when Pater, at age 14, was taken to the Terrazin camp. During his two years there, he continued his writing and artwork creating many articles, stories, poems, paintings, drawings, and woodcut prints. But in September of 1944, he was taken to Auschwitz, and there, at 16, he was murdered. Shortly before being taken from Terezin, but before his 16th birthday, he wrote about a building in Terezin called the Cavalier. This was a building where the elderly, ill, and infirm were warehoused in the camp. Of that place, he wrote, A room beneath the cavalier, stinking of the stench of latrines, weak light, filth, spiritual and physical. The only care is to eat and get some sleep. And what more? A spiritual life? Could there exist anything more in those underground layers than mere animal needs to satisfy physical needs? And still, it is possible. The seed of a creative idea doesn't die in the mud and scum. Even there, it will germinate and spread its blossom. This is the story about the boy who wrote these words about his family, about me, his sister, Eva, and our parents, Otto and Maria.
心。